hello everyone. Uh, I am Muminol uh, and my uh, colleague Zinan. We work uh, for Linux Systems Group at Microsoft. So today we will be presenting uh, the performance between uh, KVM, KMU, and a Linux root partition on Microsoft Hyper-V uh, with Cloud Hypervisor as the VMM. So we think uh, uh, community would be interested to know about the virtualization stack that we have been building for few years at Microsoft. So let's get into that stack a little bit. Uh, traditionally, at uh, Microsoft, we have the Microsoft Hypervisor, and Microsoft Hypervisor is a Type 1 uh, hypervisor. You know, like, uh, the Type 1 hypervisor has a root partition that communicates with the hardware to, uh, uh, root partition communicates with the Microsoft Hypervisor to create and manage VMs to orchestrate the uh, VM lifecycle management. Uh, we have been, LSG have been uh, working, uh, and for the root partition, we have been using Windows for a long time, and LSG uh, virtualization team has been working uh, to an alternative operating system, and we brought up Linux uh, as an alternate solution of uh, Windows. So, you can say like a, a Windows root partition that can actually create both uh, uh, different types of file partition like Linux, Windows, and uh, PSD. The, we are trying to do the same on the uh, right side where we are using Linux as the root partition on top of Microsoft Hypervisor. So in our MSSB-based virtualization stock, we have the hardware than Microsoft hypervisor in the Linux root partition. So we have a Linux kernel module, the dev MSSB, that's similar to, like, some sort of similar to dev KVM that manages uh, uh, the virtual machines. And uh, for the VMM, we are using cloud hypervisor that is a lightweight and Rust-based VMM, which is also a mem uh, member of Linux Foundations. So let's talk into the confidential VMs on KVM QMU. So we have the AMD uh, hardware, and on top of KM KMU, KVM, we have uh, the firmware OVMF or UEFI. Yeah. So since attestation report is an important part of the confidential VMs, let's see how we can generate the attestation reports. So some to, uh, one of the tools that is used to generate the attestation report is uh, save SMP measure. So here we uh, the tool needs to have the OVMF FD, either the source or the B, uh, blob, and it uh, provides the hash to actually verify the measurement later. So for the next few slides, uh, when we talk CVM, we we mean to like we mean uh, AMD Save SNP based CVM. Since we know, like, uh, the CVM is supported on, bo uh, on both uh, Intel TDX and ARM CCA. So on the confidential VMs on MSSB, we have the similar uh, hardware, AMD hardware, and Microsoft hypervisor and cloud hypervisor. But instead of using some, uh, uh, like, OVMF or UEFI firmware, we are using IZVM you know, like the IZVM file format that uh, made by Microsoft. It's called uh, inter uh, Independent Guest Virtual Machine. That's a mm, uh, 
file format there and that is uh, actually ISVM file is generated by a Python script that Microsoft already open sourced it and that has uh, the, the script has uh, Linux loaders in it and it, it embed Linux kernel and initRD and make the uh, create the VMSA page on the fly and uh, may, uh, create an ISVM file that will be later used to load the guest. And that supports direct kernel boot. And also, after uh, the, once the script generates the ISVM file, we get the hash. The one issue with this script we have at the moment, we have to provide the um, SFA table dump. And that we need to depend on some other open source tool, like some SCPA utility tools. So for the next uh, few slides, my colleague uh, Zinan will be presenting some numbers, comparison between KVM and uh, Microsoft Hypervisor stack. Sure. Uh, so first, let's try to understand the test setup, right? Like, uh, what, do, what are we testing, right? So. Uh, we, we have two different setups. Uh, in the first setup, uh, we are running, uh, in, in both the setups, like we are running like MSHV as the L0 hypervisor and Windows as the root partition. Uh, but in the one setup, we are doing MSHV as the L1 hypervisor, and on top of it, we run C, uh, Cloud hypervisor as the VMM. In the other setup, we run KVM QMU uh, as the L1 hypervisor, and on top of it, we launch like nested CVM guest. So what we want to test is like the performance difference uh, between nested CVM on, on the MSHV stack versus the KVM stack. Uh, so we did like a couple of experiments. Uh, the first one is like the network throughput test. Uh, if you want to see the hardware setup, we have like a AMD Epic server uh, with like one TB of RAM um, on which we launch an L1 VM, uh, which has around 16, gigs of, 16 CPU and 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, I, I perform the test in two different modes, in a single queue setup and a multi queue setup. So I'm using like Vertio uh, Nix to do all these experiments. Uh, and I basically run like in a 10 tap interface uh, with single queue and multi queue uh, with different VM sizes. Like in a single queue setup, I use one CPU and four gigs of RAM. And uh, in multi queue, I use like uh, eight, eight CPUs and eight gigs of RAM. Um, the no and if you look at like, I'm comparing four different things right now. Uh, the first one is uh, the base thing, right? Like where I just launch a nested guest and I don't do any 7SNP stuff, right? Like I just do a basic nested L2 guest. Uh, on the same machine which has like the 7SMP thing. And then I do a KVM, QMU, nested CVM. Uh, again, then I have like two MSHV specific setups. In the first setup, like uh, where we do like remap the GSCB page into the VMM. And in the other setup, we don't do the remapping into the GSCB page and instead use the hypervisor hypercalls to update the GSCB mapping. Uh, this turns out to be like a performance issue, right? Like because if, if you have to update GSCB page, GSCB page is usually updated when you are handling like VMG exits. And uh, these happens often when you are doing like network IO throughput uh, as part of your MMIO exits, right? So uh, it turns out that uh, the mapping GSCB page into the user space is like a lot helpful, as you can see from the graph as well, uh, that we are able to reach as close to KVM uh, when, when we started mapping the GSCB page into the user space process. Uh, there are still some outliers in case of multi queue setup. That is again like a design choice in the hypervisor, in the Microsoft hypervisor that uh, whenever the VMM gets access to, for example, like the shared pages, it needs to do an additional hypercall to actually gain access to those pages. Uh, because of that, like uh, we are not as performant as KVM in case of like multi queue setup. Um, one question. Yeah. So you are not testing the non nested case at all here. There's no non nested. There. Is not tested. Do you have some intuition about what that might be like? More performant than nested. Okay. So just one question. So the fourth one is uh, no SAV SNP yeah. for Microsoft one, but the, no equivalent for KVM. No equivalent for KVM. I think the numbers are very similar. So I, I did that testing as okay. well, but it was getting too clumsy to put out there. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was wondering how to read this slide. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we did a similar kind of testing with the block IO throughput as well, uh, in which I do like. Uh, two kinds of operations, like random read writes versus non-random read writes. Uh, and, and the observation was very similar uh, that we observed in the network throughput, right? Like uh, KVM, uh, like with remapping, we were able to achieve uh, as good performance as KVM QMU. 
and without remapping the S low. Uh, we did some CPU stress testing as well, uh, just to make sure, right? Like, uh, so the CPUs are also as performant. Uh, there were like numbers of similar, so there was nothing interesting that we, that we observed here. Uh, but we have like few discussion points, right? Like uh, my colleague mentioned the ACPI tables, right? Like we need to dump the ACPI tables while generating the AC IGBM files. Uh, but ACPI tables usually contains like a lot of dynamic information. And for some of those dynamic information, currently we have some PV interfaces, for example, like CPU count. We expose it via PV interface. But ideally it should be exposed in ACPI table in one of the tables, right? Like the MP tables or something. Uh, but yeah, we, we want to get away from these PV interfaces and like uh, natively use uh, ACPI tables, but the problem there is like, as soon as you start putting this information at the time of IGBM generation, you will end up with multiple IGBM files and you will end up with multiple hashes that you don't want to manage. Uh, we're also looking into like uh, alternative CVM native firmware, like CVHM, and not use UFI because the binary blob size of UFI is huge, and that affects the measurement time, like then that affects the boot time as well, because we want this to boot very fast, like. In our testing, we observed that like hashing a page takes almost like two milliseconds per page, and uh, if you have like a lot of things to measure during your boot time, then the boot time is always <coughs> lower uh, if you were to use UFI. Uh, but I know that TDCM does not support AMD 7MP at this point, but there's an open code request, uh, or there's an open discussion going on that TDCM should be supporting 7MP as well. Um, the other thing is like uh, the, there's another design choice in the hypervisor where it requires that all the guest memory to be moved into exclusive state or encrypted state before the guest is started. Uh, and initially we were using like 4K pages and that was taking a lot of time to do that hypercall. Uh, we moved on to using glass pages, but even then if you have like huge amount of memory, like 200 gigs, that takes a lot of time to boot. Uh, I don't know how is the situation on KVM, so I would like to hear opinions from we also want to support live migration at some point in Cloud Hypervisor, so it hopes out all the way up cloud. Thank you. Oh. Okay, it was. Well, with regards to boot time optimization, the Mm, as I understand correctly, the problem is that you are hashing the memory pages using one, just one CPU, right? Yes. Couldn't you split the memory into blocks and hash uh, using multi multiple CPUs uh, every block and then uh, hash the hashes of, of them? The thing that hashes is the um, AMD security processor, which is a tiny ARM core. Uh, along the PSP your... processor, which is so hashing. I mean, the only real optimization for, for boot time um, hashing of, of, of guest pages is, is lazy acceptance. <laughs> so we do that as well. So we only measure like our kernel and the init RD, but the thing is like sometimes init RDs also explode a lot. And yeah. Why, why are you measuring the init RD as part of your launch digest? You don't need to. As long as you take a hash of your init RD and the hash of your kernel, and you have your initial firmware validate those hashes, you already, you, you, you reduced your, your measurement time, but still have the same guarantees. Yeah, so currently we are doing their kernel boot and we cannot move to that approach, right? As soon as we go to like TDCM or something, I, can, I think we can use it with DM Verity, right? Like we can use like in a, uh, in a, in a root file system and then use DM Verity on top of it to do this measurement stuff, right? There is support for doing that, exactly that hash thing you described with SNP, well, and SEV on a direct boot. It's called like measured direct boot and it's implemented in the AMD SEV um, OVMF firmware package. It's in OVMF, right? Uh, but we don't support OVMF, right? We want to do direct, direct kernel boot at that point. Um, is direct boot the only way? Can you just boot uh, an unmodified ISO? whatever it is called. So we want to do non-direct kernel moves, like use like TDCM or something like that in future, but as Use now, what you said? TDCM or something like that, yeah. so that it boots up the actual kernel uh, and move all these hashes in a file uh, instead of measuring. We only measure TDCM and then TDCM takes care of uh, establishing the root of trust. Yeah, okay. So, so an ISO, as in you don't have access to the kernel at all then, or in it already. 
like there's yeah, no yeah we don't do currently iso boots or any other formats right yeah but you we can too can. yeah okay so real quick going back to the boot hashing thing so yes the psp is slow right you could imagine if you have a two stage loader process where you load a minimal shim that is responsible for measuring the rest of whatever you're loading whether that's qmu firmware kernel and in rd that's the strategy you want to go towards because the psp is slow Advertising here, um, we are going to talk about exactly that problem at KVM from second day, if you guys are there, um, in our presentation on how to bring your own firmware to VMs so that yeah. you can actually update all of that and have super fast reboot even with an ISO uh, into your own launch measurement. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, going back to a different topic, did you have to modify KVM at all in order to support running CVMs as a nested L1 hypervisor? Yes, uh, there were patches to modify KVM. Uh, I think one of my colleagues, like Jeremy, is working on upstreaming all those patches as well. That's what I was going to ask exactly. when those are coming. <laughs> what is it about TD shim that specifically that makes it so you can't just use the, the hashed yeah. values that you're expecting once you transfer control over to TD shim? And so that you could just hash in that trusted environment, you could just check what you're loading and against the, the hash values that are recorded into the image. Why can't that work with TD Shim? It can work with TD Shim. Uh, I'm just saying that we don't have support for TD Shim. So TD Shim does not support SNP guess at the point. So okay. it requires a lot of love to implement support for it. So I, okay, maybe I misheard because I, I thought somebody had offered that approach and you said that TD Shim was the reason you couldn't pursue that. So if if that's I mean, not the case. We don't implement TD Shim as of now, so we cannot move away to that approach right away. Uh, we're just using IGVM direct kernel boot uh, to do all the stuff. Okay, then thank you. Thank you. Thank you.